Thanks a bunch for tuning in to Dirty Teeth. It's great to see you. My last video discussed some fears and goals before embarking on the Iditarod trail race. So if you want a little context and what to expect from this video, I suggest you watch that one first. Anywho, I'm back at home with my family, and as this little piece of wood happily attests, I finish the race. More importantly, I'm in one piece with no permanent damage to myself. Hopefully, this video will give you a glimpse into an amazing adventure that I won't soon forget. And if I'm lucky, it'll help ignite a spark in some of you to put ITI on your bucket list as well. It's demanding and unforgiving at times, but man, it's big and it's grand and it's beautiful and it surely left its mark on me. So without further ado, this is my mid-packers night dream on the Iditarod Trail. Rise and shine. And this is the marvelous view from my hotel room. I got into Anchorage late last night. The race starts tomorrow at 2 p.m. So I've got about a day and a half to get everything dialed. I roughly assembled my bike right when I got in and also checked my luggage to make sure TSA didn't confiscate my stove or fuel bottle or anything. All good there. Luckily, no issues with transportation at all, except I sat next to this big Russian dude who snored like a freight train and was listening to like bagpipe music in his earphones. I don't know, pretty weird. So I didn't really get a chance to sleep on the plane. No biggie. I'm gonna go get some brekkie and head down to race checking. After check-in and taking my class photo, I met up with a few friends for one final shakedown ride. We cruised the local trails and pulled out our stoves for one last test. Then we spent some time watching some local sled dog races. This was a first for me and it was so much fun. That was awesome. That's so cool. Then we wrangled up some folks for some pre-race drinks and dinner at the Bear Paw. And then Sylvester and I enjoyed watching Spielberg's remake of West Side Story before dozing off for the night. All right, it's almost go time. I just had breakfast, made myself a little PB&J for the road for the hour and a half ride to the start line on the bus. Pretty much nothing left to do except take Sylvester down, throw it on a U-Haul, relax for a couple more minutes, and then start riding this thing. I'm feeling a little anxious, a little apprehensive, a little nervous, but more than anything, just excited to get on my bike and get this thing going and start riding and hopefully those nerves will go away and I'll just open myself up to the wild blue yonder and uh, enjoy the Alaskan wilderness. Upon arrival at Kinnick Lake, most of us headed into the Broken Boat Bar and Grill to kill some time before the race start. A dude came up to me and introduced himself as Lee Kinder. Turns out he makes all the super cool awards at JP's Fat Pursuit and he happens to live right near the lake. It was great chatting with him and he handed me this little Velcro patch which says fast or slow, just keep moving. I love it and I carried it with me the whole way so thank you Lee for helping me through some tough stretches. I ordered a burger and took stock of the nervous excitement surrounding me. Then I took one final spin to make sure the bike was all good and nothing was damaged in transport. Just before 2 p.m., a new friend Chuck looked at me with this huge smile and said, if you're grinning, you're winning. I couldn't help but to just laugh and smile back and all the pregame nerves and jitters just washed away right in that moment. And just like that, there was a gunshot and we're off. Okie dokes, I'm about an hour and a half in. We're crossing Big Lake right now. Conditions have been fantastic. Can't be any better, it's about 10 degrees. Firm, so I'll take you all we can get it. <laughs> I don't even know where I'm going. I'm just following these two guys in front of me, looking at their tracks. Everybody's been confused. There's all these different ways to get to Butterfly and everybody's like trying to find the quickest, most direct, most firmest route. I have no clue. I'm just following some people, so hopefully I get there. All right, Butterfly Lake, 
CP1. Hey, 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 I left Butterfly on my way to Bentalit Checkpoint 2, which is at mile 70. Got a long way to get there. Got a ride through the night, but so far so good. Body's feeling good and just blessed to be out here to check in soon. Shortly after filming that clip, the route began to meander along the Yetna River. I had been warned by many people about a significant temperature drop of 10 to 20 degrees right when you hit the river. And it was like someone just clicked the cold switch on. Within a matter of minutes, the temperature slammed down to negative 20 Fahrenheit and eventually down closer to negative 30. This was new to me territory, but I was rewarded with the most insane Northern Lights display along this stretch. Some of us managed to capture a few still images, but they don't even do it justice. The greens and purples and oranges were so alive and so vibrant, they were dancing around and ebbing and flowing like an EDM concert. I'd never seen anything like it before, and it helped pass the time heading towards Yetna. I later spoke with ITI veteran Matt Tanaka, who's lived in Alaska all 64 years of his life. He said that night was the best Aurora Borealis show that he can remember. I'm still in awe of being immersed in the beauty and energy of that night. Ooh. This is Yentna, unofficial. <laughs> Checkpoint used to be official. Now they're Trail Angel. Uh, it's been about negative 20 for the last six hours of riding, so super, super stoked to be here. Uh, let's go inside and do some self-care. When I stepped into Yetna Station, it felt like walking into an Iditarod time capsule. I quickly hung up some clothes to dry and scarfed down some cheesy bread and soup, which warmed my soul. There wasn't a real bathroom, but there was a glory bucket plopped into a hole, and that's way better than an outhouse, especially in those temps. I'm not a night person and was pretty drained after an anxious morning along with a 2 p.m. start, so I paid 25 or 30 bucks and rented a bed. In hindsight, it was a great decision. It allowed me to get a few hours of quality sleep and get my body on a regular schedule. When I woke up, the place was absolutely bustling and there was even a dude sleeping underneath my bed. <laughs> I almost stepped on him. <laughs> even with earplugs, the snore factor was insane, so it's a good thing I can sleep through almost anything. Before leaving, I saw this guy dipping his hands in water with some scary looking frostbite on all of his fingers. He was preparing to get evacuated to a hospital. This hit home and served as a grim reminder of the severity of the route. Good morning. It's about negative 26 on the river. I'm on the Squintner River. Sun is rising behind me. Oh, is it beautiful. I can't stop for too long. I don't want to let my hands freeze, but just want to say hello. Good morning. So blessed. The next few hours were spent on firm and fast trail, but looking back, it was freezing cold and all about self-care. Wiggling my toes and over-articulating my ankles, cracking hand warmers and sipping water every few minutes to make sure my hose didn't freeze over. No dilly-dallying, shovel in some food and keep moving. I found out later that numerous people scratched due to weather on that first day. And something like 44 of 97 total participants quit throughout the race. So I really feel lucky just to have finished. But knowing my systems were holding up and I still had a couple more chest moves in case it got windier or colder really helped to build my confidence for the rest of the trip. Oh, finally rolling out to Benelit Lodge. This has been a tough morning. The cold temps were wreaking havoc with my toes and fingers. It was just constantly working to keep everything warm. And uh, finally, the temps are raising up. It's only about negative five now. Feels like a hot summer day. <laughs> anyway, rolling up to CP2, electric boogaloo. It's actually pronounced Bentalit, and the lodge is a gorgeous oasis, which came as a total surprise to me. As highfalutin as it seemed, Chanda and her team were super helpful and made us all feel like we were a part of the family. There were fancy boot dryers, reclining chairs, and I ate a super juicy burger and fries. Then I got a breakfast burrito to go. I could definitely see hanging at this place longer, but alas, I departed with Perry and Ryan and kept on chugging down the river. Yeah! Ryan and Perry! Woohoo! Okay, so the update is 
We left Benelit Lodge. We bypassed Skuente. Didn't really take time to stop at the roadhouse because it's so close. Only like 10 miles from Benelit. And now we've made the turn and we're starting to climb up to Finger Lake, which is the next checkpoint. Sorry, I'm slurring my words. It's so cold out. And that's where my first food drop is. And it's kind of where we start climbing up to Puntilla and then up and over Rainy Pass. So some good stuff ahead. So beautiful out here just on the open vista. Check this out. Eventually we crossed Shell Lake and reached a couple warming cabins. The caretaker Chris kept the wood stove burning for riders like us that were passing through. It was awesome. We took plenty of time to warm up and do some self maintenance. Perry and I also took this time to heat up our brekkie burritos from Ben Tallet on the wood stove and I heated up some pepperoni as well. Let me tell you, that hit the spot. Night fell and we rode a few more hours, eventually reaching checkpoint 3 at Finger Lake around midnight. That was a big day. After sorting through my food drop, I threw my sleeping bag on the floor and got five fantastic hours of sleep. When I woke up, I shoveled down three bean and cheese burritos and then was out the door for another day filled with more fun. All right, we just left Finger Lake. We're in a snowstorm. It started puking early morning. And yeah, just another aspect to the ITI. Should be slow going today, all the way to Pontilla. Woohoo! There's Perry and Ryan. <laughs> Let's go. The only way to know where the trail is are these little sticks, these little ITI trail markers with the orange on them, and they're reflective at night. But if it wasn't for that, there literally is no trail right now. Just riding from stick to stick to stick. We're gonna do that all the way to Pontilla. Check it out, finally seeing some mountains. Heading through the Alaska range. I think here comes Perry. Or not. All right, Perry. Wish Get me luck. Get some. <laughs> Woo! Yeah. Happy steps. He's the master. <laughs> Gotta drift it. You okay? <laughs> little drop in. So the snow kind of let up. The sun is threatening to poke its head out. But man, we're just enjoying these freshies. It's like fat bike single track with a little duff on it. Insanely fun. Dude, how ridiculously beautiful is this? Yeah, making our way up to Puntilla, uh, AKA Rainy Pass Lodge. And it is fantastic. The sun is trying so hard to pop out. Um, but either way, we've got like an inch of fresh duff and going through that single track. Definitely one of the highlights. Yeah. <laughs> I don't even think you can understand how stoked I am right now. We are rolling in to the Puntilla checkpoint, CP4, uh, which is also right next to Rainy Pass Lodge, where we're gonna have 
a $75 dinner, which I hear is amazing. Normally, I would never spend that much on a meal for myself, but when you're up here in the middle of nowhere, it's what you do. And that is it. That is Pantilla. Made it. CP4. Damn. So <laughs> sick. Woo there's the rainy pass sign. Tomorrow we go see the real one. That is the goal. Here we are, another morning on the Iditarod Trail. It's about 7.30 in the morning. As you can tell, the storm looks like it's starting to clear out. It's about negative five right now. I just did some morning routines in that little building right there. And we're getting ready to head way up there into Rainy Pass the high point of the race and just that quintessential spot where everybody takes the picture by the sign and I've been looking forward to this for years so yeah I don't even know what else to say I'm just super excited about today so blessed having so much fun meeting such good people all the goals on my checklist you might have remembered from my other video so far so good god I must have slept like 10 hours it was insane we're, we're in no rush um, just kind of roaring our way along, race touring, going fast when we're riding, but then enjoying the downtime. I had the best dinner last night in the lodge. Met Matt Tanaka, Bill, and yeah, drank some wine. This has been a fantastic stop, but now it's time to get up and over that pass and into Rome. Perry, where are we going? Rainy pass or bust. Storm blew through. Oh yeah. Just a little ribbon of skinny single track from the few tires that have come through before us this morning. You're right. Get some. Get some. How long have we been riding today, Perry? Shoot, let's take a look here. We're coming up on uh, five and a half hours. And about how far have we gone, you think? 12 miles. 12 miles. 13 miles. All right, 13 miles in about five and a half hours. A lot of pushing and then a lot of granny gear techie stuff and, and then pushing again. And a lot of wind. And a lot of wind. We finally got some respite from the wind. But now, the sun's out. I'm gonna show you these views. We're going up there to Rainy Pass. This is the goal, this is the dream. Here we go. We got the sun by our side. We've got allies. Yes. And for the moment, the wind died down and the veteran Bill took off his goggles and that makes me feel good. Towards the top of Rainy Pass, finally. Rainy Pass. Here we come. Top of the world, you know why? Because of this rainy pass, baby. We made it. We done good. We done good. Oh, oh, oh. Rainy pass, baby. <laughs> After some more hike a bike while descending from the high point, we eventually reached the Dazel Gorge around magic hour. We were treated to fast and flowy single track, swooping all around, crossing ice bridges over flowing creeks, and it was amazing. The hours and hours of seemingly endless post holding was quickly forgotten. Funny how that works. This was one of the highlights of the whole trip and perhaps the best extended descent I've ever done on a fat bike. Sorry I have no footage to show you, but I've got the memories and if you know, you know. <laughs> Didn't get a chance to talk much on the way down from Rainy Pass because it got dark and it was cold and we had to boogie to make it here to Roan. So just letting you know I'm here at Roan, checkpoint five. Vivian outside of the cabin tonight, snowing a little. That's about it, I'm gonna go to bed. Before bivying for the night, I did take the opportunity to hang out and decompress in the checkpoint tent. 
I had some freeze-dried pod thai, along with the famous roan bratwursts cooked up by Dr. Matt. And they were better than advertised. The second of my two food drops was there, as well as a grocery store full of goodies left behind from drop bags of riders that had already scratched. Super volunteer Lori was also serving up hot chocolate with Fireball. Life was good. For Brecky, it was all about hot oatmeal and hot tang. Breakfast of champions. All right, the sun is up here at Roan Cabin, or Roan Tent Shelter, I should say. And we're getting ready to hit the road. It's almost 8 a.m. And we're gonna start going towards Nikolai, which is pretty far. Don't know if we're gonna make it there today, but we're gonna do our best. Maybe try to make it to a shelter cabin somewhere in the middle, but we're just gonna get on our bikes and start riding. And <laughs> this is the best, dude. Oh, that was a monster hike a bike section. Woo! But man, just another area we out here. Still going up. Okie dokie, time for an update. It's been about eight hours since we left Rhone. It's 4 p.m. And man, we just got crushed in this one section called the Farewell Burn. I think I'm still in it. Um, it's just a lot of ups and downs, ups and downs, which is great, it's fine. I don't know if you can tell right now, but I'm still just going up and down, up and down, just endless trenches here. That along with uh, a lot of moose tracks. The moose come along and post hole. So it's just been a long morning, but we're persevering, pushing along. Anyway, that's the update. All is good. Still smiles for miles. <laughs> we decided to hit Nikolai in one big push after taking a break at Sullivan Creek. Thank you, Mark, for dropping your pot in the creek and sharing your cold water with us. Unfortunately, the rest of the evening consisted of mostly post-holing through soft, wind-blown snow that affected the swampy areas leading up to the checkpoint. Temps were again closing in on the negative 30 Fahrenheit mark, and it wound up being an 18-hour day, probably the longest and hardest day of the race. But we knew that a warm community center was waiting for us, and we got to partake in another amazing light show. By the time I passed the barking dog that greeted me on the way into town, I was concocting music and singing out loud and pretty much delirious. All right, quick update. We had some McGrath, not McGrath. <laughs> Today has been one of the hardest, most treacherous, most beautiful, most fulfilling, most blessed days I've ever had in my life. I got to ride bikes with friends, get to push bikes for endless hours, up and over, whoop after whoop for 30 or 40 miles somehow wound up here and only like 50 or 60 miles from the finish line in McGrath tomorrow. Uh, yeah, I can't even explain how today's been, but it's going to go down and my memories is one very fulfilling day. And um, right now I'm going to go in and eat some food and crack open my sleeping bag and just rest in such good peace tonight. Whew, see you tomorrow. <laughs> when I got inside, I promptly ate a pack of freeze-dried beef stroganoff with powdered cheese and powdered butter, and then I followed it up with some tortilla soup and a burger that Josh and John whipped up. Thank you, fellas. I used the first flushing toilet that I could remember and slept like a baby. When I woke up, there was one thing on my mind. McGrath, the finish line. Come on, Alan, McGrath or bust. McGrath or bust. All right, this is it. Uh, the final leg to McGrath starts right now. 47 miles, right now it's negative 10. Supposed to get down to like negative 27. A little nervous about that. People that went through yesterday took them like 14 to 16 hours. A lot of post holding and pushing, but we just wanna get through with this, so here we go. Lots of this, lots of just pushing our bike. 
hours on end. We had a decent trail going for a little while and then a snowmobile came through and chopped it up so now it's walking time. More of the same. This is actually rideable. I've been riding most of it. Granny gear, or second from granny. Really low tire pressure. But I like switching up the muscle groups and enjoying a hike. Pretty gorgeous. Sun is setting almost to McGrath. Probably about 12 more miles to go to McGrath. Enjoying it <laughs> as hard as it is and as slow as it is. Just keep riding forward, one pedal stroke at a time. On we go. So the sun has set. This is my last sunset of the 2023 ITI. And I'm just relishing this time, soaking it in. And I'm in no hurry to get to that finish line. It's there, I do wanna get there, but man, I don't know when I'll be back out in a place as magical as this, so I'm just enjoying it. Next time I see you, it'll be at the finish. There we have it, officially finished. This puppy is over. And just like that, you and your bike are ushered into a heated garage where you can start stripping off your wet clothes and begin to warm up. Then it's a Denali Twister Creek IPA, three bowls of chili, some Advil, and a shower to start feeling human again. After that, it's time to decompress while sharing stories with volunteers and other finishers and go outside and cheer on the new finishers that cross the line. Then you initial your picture as part of the class photo and eventually fall into the deepest slumber of your life. Wake up to the smell of hearty man cakes being served, eat, hang out, cheer on other finishers, sleep, eat, repeat again for a couple days until it's time to throw the bike in a cargo plane and hop in a puddle jumper back to Anchorage. Yeah, Alan. Yeah, buddy. Heading for the airport. On the way to the McGrath airport. The flight takes you right over the Alaska range and our race route. We were all pulling up Gaia on our phones and pointing out landmarks. It really is something to look down from that perspective and think to yourself, wow, I just rode my bike through that. An unforgettable way to close out an unforgettable trip. Thank you so much for letting me share it with you. Thanks for hanging out to the end. Until next time, ride bikes, give back, pay it forward. Thanks so much for squeezing dirty teeth into your busy schedule. Please help us reach more people and ensure you receive new videos by giving this video a like, subscribing to the channel, and clicking the notification bell. Until next time, ride bikes, give back, pay it forward.